Welcome to the training course regarding the assessment of visual and tactile contact in individually housed calves, which is a service of the European Union Reference Centre for Animal Welfare for Ruminants and Equines. This lecture is designated to introduce to you the thematic fact sheet and the indicator fact sheet regarding visual and tactile contact in individually housed calves. My name is Josef Schenkenfelder and I am working as a staff scientist at the Division of Livestock Sciences at the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, Vienna. My main research interests lie in the on-farm welfare assessment of dairy cows and it is my pleasure to talk to you about the issue of individually housing calves. This course provides you with information on the standards for the protection of calves set out in Council Directive 119 from 2008, which is then linked to basics on the biology and needs of calves with regard to social contact. Ultimately, this should enable you to understand criteria for the assessment of compliance with the directive. As you are certainly aware, Council Directive 119 from 2008 lays down the minimum standards for the protection of calves. There it is defined in Article 3 that no calf shall be confined in an individual pen after the age of eight weeks and that individual pens, except those for isolating sick animals, must not have solid walls but perforated walls which allow the calves to have direct visual and tactile contact. Furthermore, a calf in this directive is defined as a bovine animal up to six months old. It is common practice in the dairy sector to separate calves from their dam shortly after birth and to keep them individually during the first weeks of life. In general, two major housing systems can be distinguished, which are firstly hutches with an enclosed front yard for outdoor housing, and secondly, different types of pens for indoor housing of calves. Depending on their structural features, but also spatial distribution, these systems allow different levels of visual and tactile contact between calves. However, there is no further specification of visual or tactile contact within the directive, which is why this open norm needs further clarification. To understand the welfare concern that arises when isolating calves, it is advisable to take a look at their biology and needs. In natural or near natural settings, different interactions between a calf and the herd mates can be observed. Calves engage in play behaviors like headbutting, mounting, jumping, running or chasing other calves, and these behaviors increase in frequency over the first two weeks of age. It was also shown that dairy calves are motivated for social contact during the first eight weeks of life. In an experimental setup, it was demonstrated that calves are motivated which means they work harder for unrestricted social contact with a conspecific than for contact with a conspecific's head only through metal bars. Even more, there is evidence that social isolation during infancy is associated with abnormal behavior and developmental problems, which is why social contact in early life is deemed key to normal development. In conclusion, the common practice of isolating calves in dairy farming disregards the social nature of bovines and strongly limits or even rules out social contact between a calf and other adult or young conspecifics. For assessing compliance with Council Directive 119, Structural features of pens or hutches can be used as proxies for assessing the level of visual and tactile contact allowed between animals. For this reason, front walls, side and back walls, and if present, the front yard in outdoor hutches are assessed for the potential to allow visual and tactile contact. 
Furthermore, the spatial distribution of pens or hutches and also their occupancy with calves needs to be considered. I would like to introduce to you our indicator fact sheet for visual and tactile contact in individually housed calves, in which we propose five categories to classify the level of restriction of visual and tactile contact, ranging from level one, no restriction, to level five, complete restriction. From a welfare point of view, visual and tactile contact should not be restricted beyond level three which describes a moderate restriction. At this level, it is acknowledged that an animal has to put some effort into initiating contact. However, no constraining body posture, pain or distress is experienced by a calf. So let me now walk you through the different levels of restriction, starting with visual contact. Level one, no restriction, describes that a calf can establish visual contact independently of its own position within the pen or its own posture and independently of the position or posture of a neighboring calf. This can be realized with metal bars as partitions as it is shown in the example picture. In this case, a lying or standing calf would be able to establish visual contact as long as there is a calf present in a neighboring pen. Level two, slight restriction, would require the contact seeking calf to actively take a neutral standing posture at any position in its own pen in order to have full view of a neighboring pen. In this case, the contact seeking calf itself is in full control over establishing visual contact. In case the full view of a neighboring pen can only be achieved by a calf taking a neutral standing posture at a specific zone in its own pen, we talk about moderate restriction. At this level, when a calf is, for example, standing close to a partitioning wall, establishing visual contact is still largely independent of the other calf's position or posture. A strong restriction, level four, would be if a neighboring calf needs to position itself in a specific zone in its pen to be visible or a contact seeking calf is required to take a strenuous, uncomfortable posture to be able to see another calf. In the example given, a calf would have to stretch its neck to be able to look through the small openings in the side wall and would still only be able to see parts of the neighboring pen. Consequently, a neighboring calf lying just behind the side wall of the pen would not be visible to a contact seeking calf taking a look through the openings. And finally, level five complete restriction indicates that it is impossible for a calf to establish visual contact with another one. The side walls in the example are solid and although there are openings in the front wall, there is no other pen on the opposite side, rendering this calf unable to establish visual contact with the conspecific. Now taking a practical example that can be found on a farm. We see that these pens have a barred front. In fact, there is one metal rod that could be opened and tilted. However, it is closed and might just be open for feeding. So there is no chance for a calf to put its head through the front of the pen. In the side wall, dividing the two pens, there is one plank removed in order to allow contact between calves. This hole, however, is quite high above the pen floor. When using our proposed assessment grid, we start with the front which in this case would allow unrestricted visual contact if other pens were located on the opposite side. However, we cannot tell from this picture and consequently only assess these two neighboring pens. The feeding opening is closed and the calf cannot put its head through the front. This, restrict, this restriction warrants a classification of level five. The sidewall offers an opening between the pen between the pens and based on this picture it is possible for the calves to establish visual contact 
without adopting a strenuous posture, but they certainly need to stand close to the sidewall in order to have full view of the neighboring pen. This equates to classification of level three. Nevertheless, if the calves were smaller, this system might be classified as level four. The back wall is solid, corresponding to a classification as level 5. A front yard is not present, so we can skip this assessment component. As an overall result, we can conclude that at least on one side of the pen, calves can establish visual contact at the level of restriction of 3, which is the lowest level of restriction and gives us our pen classification. Now, if a farm uses only one specific system, this result would provide the farm classification. However, if there are other types of pens or hutches present, all different types need to be assessed and the highest level of restriction achieved in any of the systems would be retained as the farm classification. So, for example, if a farm has two types of calf housing systems, one classified as level three and the other as level four, the overall farm classification for this farm would be level four. After this practical example, I would like to continue with the description of levels of restriction for tactile contact. Here we have a special situation where group or paired housing provides unrestricted tactile contact and equates to level one. This level is provided for illustrative reasons and not applicable in the assessment of contact restriction in individually housed calves. So level two is the best or lowest achievable level in individually housed calves and corresponds to a slight contact restriction. In this case, it is possible for calves to put their heads together and lick each other in, the, in both the full head and partly neck region and possibly also other body parts. It would also be possible for calves to show some very limited social play elements like head-to-head -head pushing or rubbing. A level three moderate restriction of tactile contact still allows calves to lick each other in the head or neck region and possibly at other body parts. But it does not allow calves to put their heads together and social play is even more limited. In the illustration, the space between the metal bars along the side wall is considered wide enough so that calves can put their muscle through, which allows them to lick each other. In contrast to level three, the metal bars in this example are very narrow and as a result, a calf would not be able to place its muscle between the bars, but only its tongue. Consequently, a system like this, or if a calf has to adopt a strenuous posture to establish contact, is classified as strong restriction of tactile contact. As with visual restriction, level five corresponds to complete restriction. It is assigned if either the partitioning walls are solid or there is no neighboring calf available to share contact with. I would now also like to illustrate the assessment of tactile contact restriction using a practical example. Assessing the pen from the front, we can see that the back wall consists of vertical, vertical bars. The side wall on the right hand side is solid and the one on the left hand side is solid up to approximately the height of withers and then horizontal bars. However, the bars in the side wall seem to be narrower than the bars in the, in the back wall. Now using the assessment grid, we will have to skip the front wall as we cannot see it on this picture. The right hand side wall does not allow tactile contact, but the side wall on the left would allow calves to touch with parts of their muscle or probably other body parts if a neighboring calf stands just next to the sidewall. Due to the narrow arrangements of the metal bars, this would correspond to level four. 
The back wall with its wider metal bars does not allow calves to put their heads together, but they can lick each other in the head and neck region, region which corresponds to level 3. On the picture, we cannot see if there is a front yard present, so we can leave this column empty and achieve an overall result that is defined by the back wall, which shows the level, the lowest level of tactile contact restriction and gives our pen classification of three. Again, if a farm uses only one specific system, this result would equal the farm classification. However, if there are other types of pens or hutches present, all different types need to be assessed and the highest level of restriction achieved in any of the systems would be retained as farm classification. Now putting all this together, we can summarize that Council Directive number 119 from 2008 forms the legal basis regarding the protection of calves and it requires that individually housed calves must have direct visual and tactile contact. Since there is no further specification on this requirement, the EU Reference Centre for Animal Welfare for Ruminants and Equines has provided clarification on this open norm. We have proposed a practical guide to support the assessment of compliance to the, to the directive which is informed by evidence that social contact between costs is important to normal behavior, to normal behavioral development. Calves are highly motivated to gain social contact and from an animal welfare point of view, we strongly encourage to provide calves with the opportunity to perform such behavior. In the end, I would like to draw your attention to the website of the EU Reference Centre for Animal Welfare for Ruminants and Equines. There we provide technical and scientific advice to support the implementation of European directives and regulations. You can find more information on the topic of visual and tactile contact in individually housed calves in a thematic and an indicator fact sheet published on the website. Furthermore, you can find information on activities and outputs of the center. So thanks again for your attention and please do not hesitate to get in touch with us for queries regarding the welfare of ruminants and equines.